noise. We all seem to fear it, maybe ridiculously so. For landscape photographers, it's like breaking an ancient covenant if you happen to let any noise seep into your images. When I started photography, I got the sense that the ISO had to be as low as possible regardless of anything else. And by doing so, I could create the best quality photos. But like a lot of us when we start out in photography, I didn't really know what I was doing and why I was doing it. But after capturing so many photos with bad exposure, poor sharpness, and blur in all the wrong places, I knew there was something I had to figure out and solve problems professionals with expensive gear might not have to deal with. So in this video, I'm going to go over my step-by-step -step process in how to deal with noise in landscape photography, especially when you don't really have the most expensive or latest gear. Before we try to figure out how to deal with noise, let's talk about where noise actually comes from and what gear even has to do with it. So noise has three main sources that you can think of. One is noise from the light source or lack thereof. The second one being noise from any of the sensor electronics before the ISO is applied. And the third is noise from any of the sensor electronics after the ISO is applied. And extra light has the ability to drown out any of this noise to create good photos by increasing the signal to noise ratio that we talked about in one of my earlier videos. But when we don't have enough light and we don't have proper exposure, increasing the ISO doesn't really give us any better exposure. What it does is it amplifies the signal. So if you have a lot of noise in your photo, that is also going to get amplified. So I like to think about this like turning the volume knob on the radio when all you hear is noise. Turning the volume knob up isn't going to make the radio any more clearer. It's just going to raise the noise level up a lot more as well. And so all you're gonna hear is just louder noise. So when you raise the ISO, sure, you amplify the signal, you amplify the light that's being received, but you also amplify the noise in the electronics before the ISO, as well as any noise from the light source, or like I said, lack thereof. New and expensive cameras tend to have better sensor electronics, which deal better with noise. So they might have a larger sensor that makes it easier to accept more light, making the signal a lot higher than the noise. And they use electronics and software to reduce the noise both before and after the ISO is applied. So by the end of it, your photo turns up looking great, even with high ISO. So what can you do if you don't have the latest gear and you find yourself turning up the ISO just to get a little bit more light but end up with very grainy pictures and just a lot of noise. There are a couple of things that we want to consider. Think of them like prerequisites that you should always be applying and thinking of before you even take the picture. So the first thing is always be shooting in RAW. A RAW allows you to pull and push the photo a lot more in post-processing, allowing you to deal with that noise later on much better than you would if you just shot in JPEG. The second thing is use the histogram. The histogram will actually tell you how the exposure of the photo looks like. So if you see a lot of the histogram weight being on the left, you know that a lot of the picture is going to be dark. Similarly, on the right, it's going to be a little bit bright. And so what you want to do is stick away from the very edges, which clips, but also try and use manual adjustment of the camera to shift the exposure a little bit to the center, maybe a little bit to the right. Now, if you want to include the shadows and you want to leave them dark later on, that's fine as well. But if you really think you want to include the details in the dark spots of the image, then you really have to move the histogram a little bit further up, but be careful not to clip the highlights, meaning don't take it too far such that the bright spots just get blown out. And the third is think of the content of the image. Some images might actually do okay with a bit of noise, and some images might react very badly with noise. Think of photos with fine details where you really want to capture the fine details and adding a little bit of noise might make it a little bit more difficult and create more soft images. Whereas images which have a lot of softer edges might work well because you'll be able to reduce the noise in post-processing. And even if you lose some of that sharpness, it won't matter because a lot of the edges are already pretty soft anyways. Take a look at this photo, which I shot with ISO 6400, which for me is pretty high ISO. And I usually tend to see a little bit of noise creeping in, but it works okay versus this photo where the noise is pretty apparent and any effort to actually reduce the noise softens the details a lot more than I would really like to. So then how do you actually think about dealing with noise when you're out there taking a photo? My process usually goes like this. First, I will try to reduce the ISO to its base level, which is for me, ISO 100. I want to limit the amount of noise as much as I can. And I know that ISO doesn't relate necessarily to noise, but I also know that if I amplify the signal using increasing ISO, then I am likely to amplify the noise as well. And for my camera, my sensor might not work as well as larger sensors. And so I really need as low of an ISO as possible to start off with. But then once I've set the ISO, I try and prioritize the shutter and aperture to the type of photo that I want. 
There have been times when I have just prioritized the ISO and let the shutter speed just go to 30 seconds, but that tends to create blurry photos, especially when you have a lot of movement in your photo, especially when there's a lot of wind out there. You might not want that long of an exposure if you can help it. But also remember that when you use long exposure, you tend to warm up the sensor a lot more, and that extra increase in temperature generates more noise within the electronics of the sensor. So when you're adjusting the exposure, try and use a tripod for one. It allows you to have a longer exposure than you would need to if you didn't have to go handheld. But if you need to go handheld, that's fine as well. You just have to think then about what is the minimum shutter speed that you need so that you can take the image without blurring it out from camera movement or movement of the subject. And then also think about the depth of field. Do you really need that big of a depth of field? Or is it okay if you only have a slightly smaller depth of field? And so you can open up the aperture a lot more and let a lot more light in as well. So increase the exposure as much as you can using these two settings without clipping the highlights and without raising the ISO at this point. Now when you've set the settings, take a look at the histogram again. Does everything look good? If not, now is the time to start increasing the ISO a little bit and let it float between some values that you think is appropriate. Again, try not to let the camera specify the exposure. Try to see what type of photo you want. Try to see if you want just silhouettes. Try to see if you want any details in the shadows and manually adjust the ISO according to that. And then from there, you are going to go between steps two and three a lot more. Don't prioritize ISO over everything, but if you're getting to the point where you know the image is going to really suffer if you increase the ISO anymore, there are a couple of other techniques that you can try out to limit the amount of noise in the end result. First thing is think about focus stacking. And what that means is you will likely open up the aperture so you'll have a lot more shallow depth of field. And what this will allow you to do is reduce the ISO more because you're getting more light in because of the open aperture. But now you have a shallower depth of field so you won't be able to get everything in focus at the same time. You take multiple images, each of which you focus at different points in the image. You focus in the foreground, you focus in the background, you focus in the midground. So multiple focus spots and then you focus stack them later in post-processing. There's a lot of good tutorials out there already that you can check out. The second thing to consider is just post-processing the noise out. You will have to post-process the image anyways because you're shooting in RAW. And when you're shooting in RAW, you have a lot of detail, you have a lot of ability to push and pull, but you aren't given the finished product just yet. So when you're post-processing, you'll be able to try and recreate what you actually saw, right? That's what we would try to do but also reduce the noise and maybe increase the sharpness a little bit to balance out with that. So I've done that for a lot of my images like these, where I know that there is a little bit of noise, but I know that they'll work well if I'm able to post-process the noise out. And finally, think about stacking the images. This is actually used a lot in astrophotography because there you have very little light. And so what we do there is we take multiple image of the same section of the sky and we stack them together. And what that does is it raises the signal to the noise ratio. You're adding all the signals and you're adding all the noises. But let's say, for example, your signal was at four and your noise was at one. Now, when you add another four to the signal and another one to the noise, you get eight and two. So the difference between the signal and noise becomes a lot greater. And that's just a very simple way to think about it. But that's basically what you're doing. You're trying to reduce the noise by adding more signal from the different images that you've captured of the same section of the sky. Noise is just one of those things which is incredibly difficult to deal with, especially when you have very low quality gear or when you don't have the latest gear. Cameras have come a long way and you're able to make great photos with the gear that you have today relative to maybe a couple of years before, but you still have to think about a lot of these other things that I mentioned, especially when you are thinking about how to use ISO and how to deal with noise before and after you take the photo. So hopefully this helped you think about how you want to take your photo when you think you will have to deal with noise, especially when you're shooting in the early hours of the day or right after sunset, for example, when you don't have a lot of light. Remember, this is just a tool to get you where you want to be. Noise will not dictate the quality of your photos. You'll have to work on composition. You'll have to think about the light. There are a lot of other factors that come into play. Noise can be used very creatively as well and it's up to you to try and figure out what you actually enjoy and how to create the photos you want to with these tips hopefully helping you out along the way all right i'll see you next time bye